join kids hat family What is the matter Tofu? I wanted to be the class leader dear but I didn't win the poetry contest last week and today I accidentally dropped the fish bowl and it broke. My teacher had to put the class fish into plastic bags and take them home. Oh. Yes. I'm sure I won't become the class leader now. I'm sure no one in class likes me now. Hmm. I understand why you feel like that, Tofu. But don't lose hope. Even the worst situations can lead to something nice. I don't think that can ever happen, Tia. Well, it happened to the musicians of Bremen. Musicians of Bremen? What happened to them? Musicians of Bremen. Once upon a time, a man had a donkey. When the donkey grew old and sick, the man decided to kill him and sell his skin. The donkey understood his master's plans and ran away and took the road to Bremen. I will go to Bremen and become a musician. On his way, he saw an old dog lying in the grass. Dog, what are you doing here? I have become so old. I cannot gather the sheep for my master like I used to. So my master beats me. Why don't you come with me to Bremen? We will become musicians there. The dog agreed and the two new friends continued their journey. In some time, they came upon a cat sitting by the road. Looking like the skies were about to come down on him. Cat, what's wrong with you? Why do you look so sullen? It is my mistress. I have grown old and cannot chase the mice like I used to. So she has planned to get rid of me by drowning me in the river. Oh, that's not nice. I have an idea. The donkey and I are going to Bremen to become musicians. Why don't you join us? You can sing a jolly tune too. The cat liked the idea very much and made his escape with his two new friends. They had only walked a while when they came upon a cock. He was singing without a stop. Cock, what is wrong with you? This is not the hour for you to sing. Well, my mistress is having a big dinner party over and she has instructed the cook to cook me for a soup. My head will be cut off this evening, so I'm singing till my neck and throat are intact. Is that it? We all are going to Bremen to become musicians. Why don't you come with us? After all, you already know beats and tunes. And 
So the party set forth on their journey to Bremen, which was still very far. As night fell, they felt tired and hungry. We must find a spot to eat and rest for the night. Everybody agreed and they decided to look for a place to spend the night. In some time, they came upon a lonely house. Its lights were lit and they could hear the sounds of a gathering from inside. The cat climbed up a tree and peeped in from an open window. <laughs> it is a gang of robbers and they have delicious spread of meats and drinks before them. I could use a couple of bones with some meat right now. And I could with something to drink. My throat is parched. Let us find a way to drive the robbers away. The four friends huddled together and at last came up with a plan to drive the robbers away. The donkey put his front feet on the ledge of the window and the dog climbed over his back. The cat climbed on the dog and the cock flew on the top of the cat's head. Once they were ready, they all performed their music together. The donkey brayed, the dog barked, the cat mewed and the cock cockadoodled. The music was so loud that the windows of the house shook and threatened to come down upon the robbers. The robbers were scared by these unimaginable sounds and quickly flee from the house. As soon as they were gone, the four musicians took over the dining table and fed themselves full. Once they were done, they switched off the lights and went to sleep. I will sleep on the straw. I will sleep by the door. I will sleep upon the hearth by the warmth of the fireplace. I will sleep on this beam of the house. Soon they all fell asleep. A little away from the house, the robbers watched as the lights of the house went off. We shouldn't have been scared like this. One of you go back in and tell us what is going on inside the house. And so one of the men made his way back into the house. The house was so dark and quiet that he went to the kitchen to strike a light. But he mistook the cat's shiny eyes for coal and put a burning match to them. Shocked by the attack, the cat jumped on the robber and scratched his face. This scarred the robber and he ran towards the back of the door to find a way out of the house. 
But in the dark, he accidentally stepped on the dog that bit his leg. All the commotion woke the cock and he came flying down to land on the robber's head and cried cock a doodle do cock a doodle do Ultimately the donkey kicked him out of the house with his hind legs The robber ran to the rest of the gang Chief the house is haunted an evil witch lives there she scratched my face at the door stands a man with a knife he cut my leg in the backyard is a monster that hit me with a club and on the roof sits a judge who screamed bring the knife up do Hearing this, the robbers got on their horses and left the house forever. But everything went so well for the four musicians that they decided to live in that house forever. And never made it to Bremen. So you see Tofu, even when you think that nothing is working out, all you have to do is keep trying and things will turn around. Thanks, dear. I always feel so much better after talking to you. You're always welcome, Tofu. in my class are very mean to me. They are so tall and big that I always have to listen to whatever they say. I am afraid to disagree with them. Size has nothing to do with courage, Tofu. You don't have to be afraid just because you are short. Have you heard the story of Peter Pan? Japan Once upon a time in London the darlings went out to a dinner party leaving their three children Wendy John and Michael at home After Wendy had tucked her younger brothers John and Michael to bed, she went to read a book. She heard a boy sobbing outside her window. He was flying. There was a little fairy fluttering around him. Wendy opened the window to talk to him. "Hello. Who are you? Why are you crying?" "My name is Peter Pan. My shadow wouldn't stick to me." "Don't worry. Come inside." Peter agreed. Wendy took his shadow and sewed it to his shoe tips. Now his shadow followed him wherever Peter Pan went. He was delighted. Thank you so much. Why don't you come with me to my home? The Neverland. I live there. with my fairy tinkerbell. Oh, what a wonderful idea. 
Let me wake up John and Michael too. Could you teach us how to fly? Yes, of course. Get them. We will all fly together. And so it was. Five little figures flew out of the window of the darlings and headed towards Neverland. As they flew over the island, Peter Pan told the children more about his homeland. That island is Neverland. All the children who get lost come and stay with Tinkerbell and me. The Indians also live in Neverland. The mermaids live in the lagoon around the island. And a very mean pirate called Captain Hook keeps troubling everyone. Captain Hook? Yes, a crocodile bit off his one arm. So the captain had to put a hook in its place. Since then, he's afraid of crocodiles. And rightly so. If the crocodile ever found Captain Hook, it will eat up the rest of what it couldn't eat the last time. Soon they landed on the island. And to the surprise of Wendy, John and Michael, Peter Pan led them in through a small opening in a tree. Inside the tree was a large room with children inside it. Some were huddled by the fire in a corner and some were playing amongst themselves. Their faces lit up when they saw Peter Pan, Tinkerbell and their guests. Hello everyone, this is Wendy, John and Michael. They will be staying with us from now on. Hello Wendy, John and Michael. A few days passed and they settled into a routine. Wendy would take care of all the children in the day and would go out with Peter Pan and her brothers in the evening to learn more about the island. She would cook for them and stitch new clothes for them. She even made a lovely new dress for Tinkerbell. One evening, as they were out exploring the island, Peter Pan warned everyone and said, Hide! Hide! Pirates! And they've kidnapped the Indian princess, Tiger Lily. They've kept her there, tied up by the rocks near the water. Peter was afraid and the princess would drown if she fell into the water. So, in a voice that sounded like Captain Hook, he shouted instructions to the pirates who guarded her. You fools! Let her go at once! Do it before I come there, or else I will throw each one of you into the water! The pirates got scared and immediately released the princess. She quickly dived into the water and swam to safety of her home. Soon everyone found out how Peter Pan had rescued the princess. When Captain Hook found out how Peter Pan had tricked his men, he was furious and swore to have his revenge.
That night, Wendy told Peter Pan that she and her brothers wanted to go back home since they missed their parents. She said if the lost children could also return to her world, they could find nice homes for them. Peter Pan didn't want to leave Neverland. But for the sake of the lost children, he agreed, although a bit sadly. He would miss his friends dearly. The next morning, all the lost children left with Wendy, John and Michael. But on the way, Captain Hook and his men kidnapped all of them. He tied them and kept them on one of his ships. As soon as Peter found out about it, he rushed to the ship. He swung himself from a tree's branch. And onto the deck of the ship where all the children were tied up. He swung his sword bravely and threw over the pirates who tried to stop him. Quickly, he released everyone from the captor's ties. Wendy, John, Michael and Tinkerbell helped all the children into the water where their friends from the Indian camp were ready with smaller boats to take them to safety. Peter Pan now went looking for Captain Hook. Let us finish this forever, Hook. Yes, Peter Pan, you have caused me enough trouble. It is time that we finish this. With his sword drawn, he raced towards Peter Pan. Quick on his feet, Peter Pan stepped aside and pushed Hook into the sea where the crocodile was waiting to eat the rest of Hook. Everyone rejoiced as Captain Hook was out of their lives forever. Everybody headed back to London. Mr. and Mrs. Darling were so happy to see their children and they agreed to adopt the lost children. They even asked Peter Pan to come and live with them. But Peter Pan said he never wanted to grow up so he and Tinkerbell will go back to Neverland. Do visit us sometime Peter Pan. I will Wendy, promise. and he flew out of the window with Tinkerbell by his side. Thank you, Tia. I feel much better. The next time the boys are mean to me, I will find a nice way out. Very good, Tofu. Now come, I can see Mom's car right there. Mrs. Farrow has gone mad. How does she think that I can help her? Why? What does she want? She wants me to help her pick the leaves from her lawn. How can I do that? I am just a kid. It is something that grown-ups do. Yes, grown-ups and Pocahontas.
Pocahontas. Once upon a time, an 11-year-old girl called Matauka lived with her tribe, the Powhatans. Matauka was always cheerful and a playful person. Hence people lovingly called her Pocahontas. One day in the year 1607, many English ships arrived on the shores where the tribe settled. The Englishmen founded a colony called Jamestown there. One day she met Captain John Smith and took a liking to him immediately. Hello, what are you doing here in the colony? I know, the winters can be hard, so I have brought supplies for the settlers. There's food and some warm clothes. That is very kind of you. Thank you. This went on for an entire year. Pocahontas helps the Englishmen build their colony and settle there. But the tribesmen grew weary of the settlers. We should ask them to leave our lands immediately. This has gone on too long. We should reason with Captain John Smith. I think he is a powerful and kind wizard. I say we drive them out of here. Give me a chance. Let me talk to them. They know I am a friend. Okay, Pocahontas. Tell the settlers to provide the tribe with guns in exchange of food and supplies we have been providing them. wants you to supply them with guns in exchange of the provisions that they send. That is not possible. With both sides adamant about their decisions, there wasn't much to be done. But Pocahontas did not give up. She continued to keep the peace between the two sides. Her patience and thoughtfulness kept the two from going on an immediate war against each other. One day, Pocahontas learnt that John Smith died in an explosion. She was very sad to know this and stopped visiting the colony. With Captain John Smith gone, I am in charge. I am tired of these fights with the tribe. I say we kidnap Pocahontas and get leverage against the tribe chief. Orders given by the new captain were carried out, 
Pocahontas was kidnapped and put on a ship immediately. There she met John Rolfe. She converted to Christianity and married Rolf. Soon they had a son. Few years later, Pocahontas traveled to London. There she met Captain John Smith. I thought you were dead. I am so happy to see you alive and well. John Smith and Pocahontas spent the rest of the evening talking about past times. A few days later, she contracted smallpox and died in London at the age of 22. When John Smith found out about her death, he said, Pocahontas saved the colony from famine, confusion and eminent death. She was 11 years old when she started helping the colony, dear. Yes. I think there is no age for helping someone. You can do it any time. Let me go and help Mrs. Faro now. Okay, see you later then. It was Miss Pine's last day at school today. Yes, I'm going to miss her too. She was very nice. Yes, and she gave all of us from class little souvenirs to remember her by. Really? Wow! What did you get? That's the thing. She gave everyone toys or fancy stationery. All she gave me was this empty diary. So? What's wrong with it? What will I do with a diary? All the kids were showing me their lovely gifts and I felt so bad. I think you need to know about the miller's son who got a cat from the miller. Once upon a time, there lived a miller who had three sons. When the miller was dying, he left his mill to his eldest son, his donkey to his second son, and for the youngest son, he left his pet cat. The two elder brothers could use the mill and the donkey for trade and earning money. But the cat had no use for them. So they kicked the youngest brother and his cat out of their home. One day, when the third son was sitting with his cat, the cat said to him, Master, don't worry, everything will be fine. How will that be? Can you get me a pair of shoes and a bag? I have very little money left, but I have never seen a talking cat before, so I trust you. And so the master bought the cat, the boots and the bag. The cat happily took it and went into the nearby forest. There 
he found a rabbit hole. He put the bag to the mouth of the hole. As soon as the rabbit came out, he got caught in the bag. The cat quickly tied its mouth and took it to the master. Master, I have brought you a rabbit for dinner. Let me cook it for you. The cat quickly cooked delicious dinner for his master. Once they were done, he went back to the rabbit hole. There he caught one more rabbit. He took this rabbit to the king's palace. Your Majesty, my Lord Marquis of Cariba has sent you a gift. Thank you, Puss, and thank the Marquis for me. The cat continued to do this for many days. One day, it heard about a nasty ogre that everyone was scared of. The cat went to meet him. Hello. What are you doing here? Oh, I just came to see why everyone is scared of you. I don't see any reason. Don't you know who I am? I can kill you right now. I don't think so. You don't really have the power. I have the power to take any shape I want. I can become a lion and strike you. Ha <laughs> ha! I am not scared of lions. I am only scared of rabbits. Well, here it goes then. As soon as the ogre turned himself into a rabbit, the cat bounced on him and killed him. The next day he requested his master, Master, please go and bathe in the lake outside the forest. I request you. The master agreed. he was taking a bath, the cat stole the master's clothes and hid them. Then he ran to the highway and waited for any carriage to pass. As soon as he saw the king's carriage pass, he called out, Help! Your Majesty, my master is in the lake, but someone stole his clothes. I don't want him to catch a cold. Please help. The king recognized the cat who had been bringing his master's gifts to him every day and stopped immediately. He sent his man to retrieve some clothes from the castle and took them to the master. They gave the clothes to the third son who looked very handsome in them. Ride with my daughter and me, Marquis of Caraba. We will take you to your place of stay. Thank you, my lord. The cat sat in front with the driver while his master sat with the king and his daughter in the back. He showed the driver the way to the ogre's castle and told him to take them there. Once they had reached, the cat got down and opened the door of the carriage. We are home, master. Uh, yes, dear puss. 
Thank you. The king was impressed by the third son's humility and manners. He decided to get his daughter married to him. The young couple happily agreed. And they lived happily ever after. So the cat that everybody thought was of no use was extremely useful and changed everything for the third son. Exactly, Tofu. I am going to keep this diary close to me always and use it to write great stories. I am happy for you. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Heart family. Subscribe here.